Hey everybody, welcome to my garden. It's about May 10th, it's still kind of chilly outside, but I'm always talking about the different fruits and vegetables that I like to grow and trying to encourage you all to grow them at home too. So I thought it was about time I took you all into my garden and showed you exactly what I have going on. So let's go start the tour. So we'll start with all of these different herbs that I have. I'm kind of calling this basil row. These all just got planted, so they're still pretty tiny. And if you come down here, we've got a couple different varieties of thyme. It's English thyme, lemon thyme. Back here, we've got two different kinds of sage. Lemon verbena, which is one of my favorite things to grow. I dry it out and make tea. And fresh tarragon, this came back from last year. A couple different kinds of rosemary. I'm kind of struggling a little bit. Back here, we have pineapple sage, which smells so fragrant and makes a nice little cocktail and has beautiful red flowers when it blossoms. And here we've got lots of oregano. This comes back every single year, bigger and stronger. And then over here we have some marjoram. Now over here on the left we have some rhubarb. I just planted this this spring and um, from what I understand I can't harvest it this year so I'm just gonna ignore it for now and move over here. I've got two different kinds of parsley. I've got flat leaf which I use more and uh, curly parsley. And here we have dill and cilantro, which I usually don't grow cilantro because it goes to seed so quickly, but it's nice just to have it. And then back here, I've got some wild mint growing. Mint you have to be really careful with because it'll take over your garden so fast. Then over here, we have chamomile. And for whatever reason, I have had such a hard time growing chamomile. Every single year, it dies on me. And as you can see, it's looking pretty terrible right now. So if you have any tips for me on growing chamomile, they say it's supposed to be really easy, but it's one thing that fails for me year after year. Please feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you do. And here I've planted some different green beans and yellow wax beans that haven't come up yet, so I want to show you dirt. Then this is a Brussels sprout plant. Here we have broccoli. I'm really excited about this crop. You know, I've never really been able to grow broccoli before. And this one's looking really nice. And then here I've planted some little Swiss chard seedlings. So as soon as this broccoli is done and you know, the next few weeks, I'm gonna cut that down and then hope that the Swiss chard will kind of grow up and get really big and take its place. Here we've got some kale and then we've got some arugula. And here we have chives, which are about to blossom. They've been trying to blossom for the last couple days, but you can see without all of the sun, they're not really doing anything. So this one, it's trying so hard to flower and it just won't but these will be blooming hopefully within the next couple of days. Then we've got my onion bed. These are red onions on the left, and then we have some yellow onions. And here we have my garlic. Garlic has become one of my favorite things to grow, probably my second favorite next to tomatoes. These are planted in the fall as bulbs, and they actually grew over the winter because we had such a mild winter, and they're just looking fantastic. Here we have some spinach. We'll be harvesting the last of this pretty shortly. And for here we have some different greens growing. This is all broccoli rob right here. This is kale that's actually coming back from last year. This is some different um, red speckled romaine. And then we have some butter lettuce over here and a bunch more arugula. And here we have peas. Um, these peas are looking nice. Here we have a compost pile. I won't open that up and show you. Here we have lots of carrots. These need to be thinned out. We'll have to pull some of those to make room for the nice big carrots to grow underneath. Same thing with the beets over here. These are all beets. I've got some different colored ones. And then over here we have radishes, which have been seriously getting eaten by, I think it's birds, but I'm not entirely sure. And uh, these are actually all pretty much done. These all need to come out because this is where I'm gonna put my peppers, and maybe some eggplants. Look at those. They're gorgeous, aren't they? These are French breakfast radishes, and they're so tasty. Then over here we have watermelon radishes, and you can see the greens on these are getting pretty big, but they haven't really grown any radishes yet, any, any actual roots or bulbs. They're still pretty small, so I'm gonna leave them in for a little longer and see what they do. Then here in these containers I have potatoes. This is my first time growing potatoes, so I'm excited. What I'm gonna do here is, uh, you know, I planted the potato seeds in the bottom with a little bit of soil. And then once that they've grown up, in fact, they're probably ready now, I've gotta backfill these with some more soil. And then when they grow more, more soil and so on. And these are some blue potatoes down here. This is, I'm very excited about. This is my strawberry bed. And you can see there are so many forming all of these blossoms and just, there's just baby strawberries everywhere. So I have to get some kind of netting or cover to put over these. If the birds like those radishes, they're definitely gonna like the strawberries and they will totally get eaten by something. Here's celery. 
I've also never grown celery before, so this is a first. And, you know, so far it's looking pretty good. Got some nice hearty stalks forming. And here we have arugula. This is a different variety of arugula that I planted, and it's gone to flower, beautiful little flowers, and they're also really tasty in salads. And then we have this other arugula, which I actually prefer. The leaves are much smaller. It's really nice and peppery. And as you can see, it's just coming up everywhere, and I'm gonna have to get rid of most of it at some point because I have other things that need to be planted here, but for now, I've just been cutting it down and putting it in our salads every night. And here we have more broccoli. Um, this head is actually ready to be harvested. You can see right here, some of the flowers are starting to blossom, which means it's actually gone a little bit too far. So I'm gonna have to pull this and maybe have it for dinner tonight. These two have already been harvested, as you can see right there, but then these little side shoots come out and we're gonna continue to harvest those and eat those for a couple more weeks. And this is red Russian kale that started to flower and it's just so pretty. Kale is a biannual, so when it starts to flower, it'll happen on the second year. And then we're probably gonna pull this out and make room for some other stuff. But these flowers are so tasty, they kind of taste like broccoli. These back here are Brussels sprouts. Now these have all been getting eaten these two plants in particular by what I believe are cabbage worms. I've been spraying them with neem oil, but it's been raining so much that I don't think it's been making a damn difference. And I also have these strawberries back here that kind of traveled and made their way. And I didn't want to pull them up because God, look how many strawberries we're getting. It's insane. We're getting so many strawberries, you guys. Look at all that. And we're getting the first blushing red berry down here, which is exciting. This Brussels sprout plant is nice and healthy. It looks like nothing has gotten to it yet. But maybe it has, so I don't know. I gotta spray these down with a little more neem oil again. And these right here are some little mustard greens. I'm probably gonna pull these up and plant them somewhere else. This is where my tomatoes are gonna go. And we have some more radishes and more garlic. And I've gotta pull all of this up and make room because I wanna get those tomatoes in soon. Like I said, it's been really chilly. It's only been around 50, 55 degrees, which you really don't want to plant your tomatoes until the weather stays around 55 degrees and up, especially at nighttime. So there you have it. That's what my garden looks like here. It's the beginning or middle of May, and I can't wait to take you guys on another tour in about another month from now and show you what's developed, what's changed, what we've harvested, what new stuff we've planted, and all of the new growth that's happened. I'd love to hear your stories about what you're gardening or get your advice on some things that maybe I'm doing wrong. You know, I've been gardening for about eight years now, and while I don't really consider myself a novice anymore, I'm still a long way from being an expert. So any advice or words of encouragement that you have, I'd love to hear it. So check back again in a month, and we'll show you what we're doing that's new. And yeah, new recipes coming soon. See ya.